the organizers for their invitation. I'm Dr. Yu Mei Wang from National University of Singapore Chongqing Research Institute. Today, I will talk about our recent work about uh, bioelectric engineered electrode electrolyte interfaces for all solid state sodium metal battery. Developing high safety, high capacity, long cyclability, and cost effective sodium batteries is appealing for the electric vehicles and the large scale energy storage systems. As shown in the red figure, the two growing market and the obvious uh, advantage of sodium battery is that sodium is evenly distributed on the earth uh, and are the most, uh, most uh, abundant element on the earth. However, when we consider the safety issue, the all solid state sodium and batteries are regarded as the next generation battery. And as an important component, solid state electrolyte should have these properties. First, it should have high ionic conductivity, uh, wide electrochemical window, good mechanical property, and also high thermal or chemical stability as well as the air stability. And the last one is the good electro electrolyte electrode contact as well as the interfacial compatibility. And as summarized in the red figure, you can see here, uh, actually, none of the single solid state electrolyte can meet all the requirements. For example, the oxide based electrolyte held a high, flux, uh, high ionic conductivity but, and good stability, but its high rigidity always leads to the bad electrode electrolyte contact, which will limit the wide uh, application of these kind of electrolyte. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. And then the sulfide-based electrolyte also have the high ionic conductivity, but low stability. On the other hand, the polymer-based electrolyte have the high flexibility, so it can form the good contact with hard electrode. However, the ionic conductivity as shown here are quite low, except for this gel polymer electrolyte, which still contains some organic solvent inside. That means there's still safety issue. Then people found light, when they combine the polymer and the ceramic together, they could make this composite electrolyte and which are able to achieve improved electrode compatibility and the stab good stability. But the ionic conductivity here you can see is still quite far below the satisfactory. And in the organic, uh, in the uh, comes the electrolyte, the end could make read with the polymer matrix, the ceramic fillers, and the ceramic polymer interfaces. And people already found that the end conduction could be greatly improved, as shown here, when the continuous interfacial pathways are formed within the comes the electrolyte. However, the agglomeration of the ceramic part particles within the comes the electrolyte always degrade the continuous interfacial pathway. So that means it will degrade the ionic conductivity of the composite electrolyte. So that means we need to change our conventional concept from the ceramic filler uh, polymer matrix composite electrolyte to the ceramic framework polymer filler composite electrolyte. And in this way, we could make this continuous interfacial pathway. And this also inspire us to make this then the ceramic framework polymer filler comes the electrolyte. Here you can see, uh, actually we prepare the porous uh, 3D ceramic framework from the soldier method, then just fill the poles with the polymer electrolyte. And in this way, we could make the uh, electrolyte with 3D interconnected ceramic polymer interfaces. And this will definitely improve the ionic conductivity. As shown here, we also measure the conductivity and compare with the reported candidate. Here are our results. You can see at room temperature, the ionic conductivity of our country electrolyte is at least one order of magnitude higher than the reported candidate. Then we also use the SPM, the scanning probe microscopy, to study the ion diffusion within the composite electrolyte, especially at the ceramic polymer interfaces. Here we use two modes of the SPM. One is the bimodal mode, which studies the surface hardness 
of the sample. And then we use the ESM to study the same position as you can see from the topography here. Uh, the ESM mode actually studies the surface deformation, which is caused by the ion diffusion. So that means the higher ESM amplitude, the faster ion diffusion coefficient. And here you can see the schematic figure on the right hand. There is a region two, and it is a hard boundary region as indicated by the bimodal mode. And uh, from the ESM amplitude, we can see it's the, uh, it has the highest ESM amplitude. So that means the end diffusion within this region is very fast. And compare the nearby region three, which is composed of the thick, uh, the thick polymer region, the ceramic polymer interfaces, and the ceramic region. The air will mainly migrate via the interfaces of region two. Well, in contrast, the air will migrate via mainly via the ceramic of region three. So the higher ESM amplitude of region two over region three indicates the uh, higher end diffusion within the ceramic polymer interfaces than the ceramic itself. Then there's also region one, which is the pure polymer region, and uh, it has the lowest uh, ESM amplitude. So that means the end diffusion within this area uh, is the slowest. Then region five, Region four and five, you can see the M will mainly migrate via the thick polymer region and quite few ceramic polymer interfaces. So uh, the ESM amplitude is much smaller than region three and region two. So from the SPM analysis, we can see the N diffuses uh, much faster at the ceramic polymer interfaces than the ceramic or polymer alone. Then from this slides, we can see the mechanical property of the, uh, of the Kamsi electrolyte. Here we compare the pure polymer electrolyte. And here you can see the ceramic framework within the Kamsi electrolyte could effectively suppress the sodium dendrite formation. So that means the Kamsi electrolyte has, ha uh, has good, uh, uh, I can see better mechanical properties. And on the right hand side, you can see the good a uh, contact could be formed and maintained between the ceramic electrode and Kamsi electrolyte, even though after 200 cycles. That is just due to the high flexibility of our Kamsi electrolyte. So uh, to sum up the mechanical property of our Kamsi electrolyte are quite good. Then uh, we just use this Kamsi electrolyte to assemble the battery, the all solid state sodium metal battery. However, uh, the battery performance are not so good as shown in this figure. Uh, the actual, actually, the discharge capacity really uh, faded quickly, especially in the first 50 cycles. And later, we just uh, disassemble the battery. And I mean, after measurement, we just uh, disassemble the battery. And uh, here we can see a lot of oxide phases form on the surface of this Kamsi electrolyte, which is previously in contact with the sodium, sodium metal anode. And here we just uh, use this red figure to, to explain this phenomenon. OK. Uh, Firstly, due to the interfacial potential drop, the space charges will form at the interfaces between the ceram uh, between the cathode and the electrolyte and anode and electrolyte. And these interfacial space charges will definitely hinder the ion diffusion through the interfaces. And this will uh, definitely increase the interfacial resistance of the whole battery and uh, degrade the battery performance. What was worse, the accumulated electrons at the anode side will further combine with any mobile sodium ions and transform into the sodium metal to further react with the polymer within the Kamsi electrolyte. And this will form the oxide SEI layer, which agrees with the uh, left anxiety results. And these SEI layers uh, are the uh, uh, will also uh, increase the interfacial resistance of the whole battery. So that will also degrade the battery performance. 
Then to solve this problem, we prepare this ferroelectric engineered complete electrolyte. And here you can see, uh, we just introduced the ferroelectric layer as both interfaces uh, between the cathode electrolyte and anode electrolyte. And during charging fundamentally, the ferroelectric polarizations could be switched as shown here. And the oriented uh, ferroelectric polarizations will build in a local electric field in the opposite direction of the interfacial potential job. And this will weaken the interfacial space charges. So it can facilitate the ion diffusion at the interfaces here and here. And then the less accumulated, uh, accumulated electrons at the anode set will further refrain the uh, further growth of oxide SEI layer and uh, also reduce the SEI induced uh, uh, interfacial resistance. And in this way, we can improve the battery performance. And actually here, we also prepare the ferroelectric engineered comes the electrolyte uh, with the same concept. I mean, ceramic framework, comp uh, polymer filler comes the electrolyte. And here we just code the ferroelectric layer on both sides of the ceramic electrolyte framework. Then we try to code the layer as thin as possible because firstly, uh, the ferroelectric coating layers are not the sodium ion conductor. Uh, secondly, the the uh, ferroelectric coating uh, the thin ferroelectric coating layers will facilitate the uh, polarization switching, and also we make this power structure from the as you can see from the figure B, because this power structure will uh, further reduce the ferroelectric domain wall pinning effect. Then after preparing the force uh, framework, we also studied the uh, exciting results. And here we can see no impurity phases. So that means the ferroelectric coating did not really affect the crystalline structure of the previous ceramic electrolyte framework. And from the PFM results, the piezo response by false microscopy, uh, you can see the obvious ferroelectric switching from the coated sample. So the ferroelectric properties of the coated sample are quite good. And after preparing the, the parse framework, I mean the coated parse framework, we also fill the pores with the polymer fillers. And here you can see we, we could prepare this uh, ferroelectric engineer to come the electrolyte. And we also study the conductivity of the coated sample. Uh, as I previously mentioned, the ferroelectric coating layers are not the sodium ion conductor. So the coating layers will definitely decrease the ionic conductivity of the sample. Even though uh, it will decrease the conductivity, but the, the polymer fillings uh, within the whole complex electrolyte will always provide the ion diffusion pathways so you can see at room temperature, the ionic conductivity of even for the lowest value, it is around uh, six times 10 to the power of minus five Siemens per centimeter, which is still quite acceptable and still comparable to the reported candidate. And on the right, the figure B, we also measure the electronic conductivity. And here you can see all the values are uh, at the level of 10 to the power of minus nine or minus 10 Siemens per centimeter. So that means for all the samples, they are quite good electronic insulating. Then we measure the electrochemical window of the uh, composite electrolyte. I mean, including the non-coated or coated one. And here you can see uh, the anodic stability extended from 4.8 volt of the uh, non-coated comes the electrolyte to 5.2 volt for the coated sample. And the cathodic stability also extended from 1.2 volt to 0.7 volt. So that means the ferroelectric engineering really widened the electrochemical window of the comes the electrolyte. Then the last, uh, the last step is to uh, assemble the battery and uh, measure the battery performance. Here we also uh, 
prepare this all solid state sodium metal battery. And here you can see at room temperature after around 80 cycles, a high capacity retention could be maintained in our ferroelectric engineered uh, battery cell. It is around 91.2%, which is much better than the non-coated sample, which is only 13%. And uh, this uh, high capacity retention of our uh, ferroelectric engineered battery cell is very close to the benchmark of, of the liquid electrolyte. And then consider that we, uh, with the uh, ferroelectric engineering, the electrochemical window of the electrolyte could be widened. So here we just measure the battery performance within a wide voltage range. As shown here, at, also at room temperature and after 165 cycles, a high reversible discharge capacity uh, could be achieved in our ferroelectric engineered uh, also it's the sodium metal battery. Here, the value is around 160 uh, milliampere hour per gram. It is quite high and the, the capacity retention is also very good. It's around 97.4%, which is much better than the non-coated sample and also better than the benchmark liquid electrolyte cell. This is because for the liquid electrolyte, the uh, electrochemical window are quite narrow. So we measure the battery performance within the wide uh, voltage range that uh, the battery performance will fade it quickly. Then what's more interesting here you can see in figure D1, you can see even after long time aging, the good capacity uh, retention could also be obtained in our uh, ferroelectric engineered battery cell. Here, uh, due to the COVID-19, we have to suspend the battery for about two months. And after the reception and uh, 180 cycles, a high capacity retention of around nine, uh, sorry, 86% could be achieved. In contrast, for the non-coated sample, uh, it filled quickly after reception and around 100 cycles. And uh, even though the cell has only been uh, suspended for one month. And from the last figure, you can see, even at the full charge stage, the, uh, our ferroelectric engineered battery cell can keep stable for quite a long time. It is around 2,400 hours. That means for about 100 days, our ferroelectric engineered also state sodium metal battery can keep stable without any self-discharging. That is quite an amazing result. Then these are the conclusions for my uh, today's presentation. Firstly, uh, the high ionic conductivity could be achieved in our uh, ceramic framework polymer filler comes the electrolyte, just uh, due to the faster ion diffusion at the ceramic polymer interfaces. And uh, even though we use this kind of the electrolyte, we found the battery performance are not so good, just due to firstly the interfacial state charges, and secondly the uh, the per electrolyte uh, sodium anode compatibility. Then to solve the interfacial problem, we use the ferroelectric engineering, and after the ferroelectric engineering, we can see the excellent discharge capacity, uh, as well as the good. Uh, capacity retention could be achieved in our uh, our uh, ferroelectric engineered battery cell. And outstanding stability could also be demonstrated in our ferroelectric engineered cell. Uh, even though the cell has been aged for quite a long time, it's about two months. Uh, so our work provides new insights in enhancing the uh, lung cyclability and stability of the solid state sodium metal batteries. And at last but not least, I will thank the funding support from National University of Singapore, Chongqing Research Institute, National University of Singapore, and the Natural Science Foundation of Chongqing, China. I will give my special thanks to my supervisor, Prof. Li Lu, and all my collaborators. And thank you all for your listening, and I'm happy here to answer.